Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the General Hospital recap for April 8th through 12th, but actually 9th through 12th because we were preempted because of the eclipse on Monday. I was so confused because I watched them all in a row and I wasn't reading, reading. And so I went to play one. I'm like, well, no, I already watched this. And then it was like Tuesday and I'm like, no, I didn't watch. And then I was like, oh, oh yeah, there's yeah. only four. <laughs> yeah. But the eclipse was pretty. Yes. So we have a few poor Charles pipelines. First, okay, we we try to stay up on things. And now I kind of feel bad that I we missed this. Um, Scarlett Fernandez had a tumor removed in December of 23. So it was last December was her last episode, the 20th. But I feel bad that we didn't. I guess we're just so used to characters like hers, like the kid characters tend to go Not in and being, out. Yeah. And you know, it was one post on Instagram. So unless I was paying attention to it like that day. Right. It got lost it wasn't, in the shuffle. Yeah. So, oh, poor baby girl. Just hope that she's feeling better and, you know, healing and all that. And then our buddy Max. I know this has like nothing to do with General Hospital, but I'm just like <laughs> proud of him because here's the deal. One day he's going to be on General Hospital. Seriously. And then he's going to be able to say, my first interview was with Amanda and Shannon on the Pier 54 podcast. They changed my life. There you go. <laughs> I mean, no, his parents <laughs> supporting him, getting out there and everything 100% changed his life. However, he had his stage debut in A Case for Two Spies. And if I was reading the program correctly, I believe he was top build right under the narrator. Nice. So I think he was the lead character under narrator. Nice. So yay, Max. So proud of you. Just remember us. That's right. Don't forget the little people. Yes. Those pictures were so cute that his parents posted. And then we had a few emails. Hi there. First, I love that someone wrote in last week and said they listen to your podcast and feel like they have GH friends. Me too. <laughs> My mom watched since the first show, but she is in a nursing home now and struggling to follow along. I try to visit when the show is live so I can put it on and help her remember everything, which brings me to the original reason for writing in. That just makes me so happy. I Okay. So Curtis's quick recovery. I totally agree with you too. Why does everyone miraculously heal and walk again so quickly? Watch. He will dance with Portia this week. Hmm. They did some kind of <laughs> tango. What is wrong with having a character be in a wheelchair? I feel bad for fans who are in a wheelchair that are watching as Curtis says how useless and unmanly he is being stuck in the wheelchair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should see him working through that and realizing you are just as manly and just as capable just differently. And you're not useless. Sonny said the same, I believe, when he was temporarily in a wheelchair. Also, when characters talk about how terrible it is to live in a facility, that makes me upset for fans who do live in a facility, mm -hmm. like my mom and other fans at her nursing home. Just a thought. Love your podcast, Heather. Thanks, Aww. Heather. I 100% agree. And it's I think that's the thing that we talk about all the time is they do so well with so many topics. And this is an important one that they're discarding and they are, listen, we've all heard me get on my soapbox about disability, but it is so highly disregarded. Mm -hmm. And I, I go back to real estate just because the number is crazy. So there is the Fair Housing Act and for 20 years, so it was established in 1968, for 20 years, disability was not included in that. It was not added until 1988. It is the number, 60% of complaints against realtors is regarding disability. Mm -hmm. It's a huge community that is just being disrespected, you know, and then they bring in guys like Chet, who is a double amputee, and he's on for a minute, and then they yep. make him leave, you know, Sonny and Curtis miraculously can walk again, you know, it's, it's unrealistic, and it's not fair. Right. And if, you know, I see from a character standpoint, that 
they want everything done quickly because now Portia's happy and this is happy and that's happy. But like you said, seeing him work through those feelings, I'm sure those are honest feelings. If you were someone who could walk, had an accident an hour in a wheelchair, you probably have some of those same feelings. So yes, express them and then move through them talking to Kevin and having a supportive wife. And blah, blah, blah. the answer is not here, do this magic surgery that most people couldn't afford. Right. It's totally experimental. And you happen to be one of the 10% that just... Right. Now you can walk. I mean, they did the, at the gym, they had that man who was also, I forget what, his physical disability, I forget what it was, but he's a real actor that has that real disability. Right. And the way that he spoke to Curtis about, dude, your life is not over. Exactly. You know, I remember, or yeah, I, okay, I'm doing a bad job remembering what, what exactly that storyline was. But the point was, is, you he know was at the about. gym, he was working out, he had a strong, healthy body. Right. Despite the fact that he had this specific disability right. and we should have stuck with that line of let's show you all the things you can do. If three years from now they wanted to be like, Oh look, now there's an experimental, whatever that is something that right. the rest of the world has actually heard of. Even if it's risky and expensive, like his wife's a doctor. Okay. They have money. Then he has the procedure. Okay. Then, I mean, I again would totally be fine with him being in the wheelchair forever, but at least let us see the progression. Right. Or also show him, show the romantics he's also able to be romantic with Portia mm -hmm. even though he was in a wheelchair yeah you know that was not it was maybe in his head right right you know they never I don't feel like I can but they never worked through that mm -hmm. you know and seeing how it tested their marriage it's like there's so many different ways that that could have been done better mm-hmm especially with the effort that Donnell was putting into it right right like he was doing a really good job of learning how to honor that storyline. Mm -hmm. And they just went, oh, nope, sorry, you're going to walk again. Nope. No. Even if they didn't want to keep him in the wheelchair, have him form a friendship with the other guy and let's make him a main character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can still move Curtis forward in the way you originally planned, but now he has this friend. He could hire the friend to work at the bar. We could see all the things that this guy can do. It's It's frustrating. But yeah. I didn't think about all the people in the... The nursing homes and yeah. everything. Yeah. Come on, GH. Yeah. Step it up. That's very... I understood when Sam was pleading with Portia about Dante and because of how that would make Rocco feel. Like, I understand that right. one of her. Right. Listen, and if you're going to so do fresh. it, we have to figure this out because Rocco's going to be... Exactly. ...feeling abandoned, you know? And it's... No, just because your dad's going doesn't mean that he's also going to be in a coma for years and years and years like your mom. Right. You know, there's... Right. And that had that had felt like it just happened. Like, can we keep him in the hospital for a few more weeks and see what happens or whatever? Right. But anyway. Yeah. We could talk about this all day. So I will just say, yep, I agree. It's totally unfair. And I wish that they would change the way it's portrayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was really hoping that he would expand upon what he was talking with Trina about last week about my eyes are open to the way that, right. you know, you're mistreated. Okay, is that the line that we're going to have the entire time and not see him find a way to ad be an advocate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -mm. okay. <sighs> All right. Um, so this week's upcoming 411, we are getting back to Bobby. What years are, is it? 95 and part of 96 until we meet Carly. Okay. Because you, that is a, you um, have claimed that whole storyline. <laughs> so I I stopped there. You need to watch it, though, with me. We have to rewatch well, it. I will so start rewatching. So we I can't was, also promise that that's going to be next week's because we have <laughs> we have to. That one, that part, we I, have to I will get it right. I started rewatching for 95, 96 because the write-ups for it weren't great. So I was trying to watch them. So at least I could feel the emotion behind them. So I will definitely go into the Carly, Carly deep dive for you. Awesome. Or with you. Yay. I'll do the write-up. Just watch. Mm -hmm. All of you just watch too. <laughs> if, if those channels have not been taken down. Right. I haven't found that yet either. Even if we watch part of it, it's going to be great. Yes. Horrible. Great. Yes. But it was such good TV. <sighs> All righty. So Hulu headlines again on Monday, we were preempted because of the eclipse. And then Tuesday, Nina and Drew get in a heated argument. Carly finds John in trouble. Sunny is furious with Jason. Michael and Willow discuss her career or her abandoning it. And Christina is 
disturbed by Ava's behavior. Wednesday, April 10th, Sunny and Jason have a tense meeting. Drew and Nina come to a surprising agreement. (laughs) Sorry. Carly begins to see a different side to John. Curtis achieves another milestone. Is that what we're calling it that now? Ava searches for something in Sunny's house. Oh, we never saw anything else about that. Okay. Thursday, Anna asks Valentine for help. Alexis receives news about her appeal. Curtis suggests a business proposition to Drew. Chase has a surprise for Brooklyn, and Nina gets the wrong idea. And then on Friday, Jason wants to give something to Carly. Tracy has a heart-to-heart with Brooklyn Mm. that I love. That was very sweet. Sasha finds Joy working in the stables with Cody, and Gregory encourages Alexis. (sighs) Where do we want to get started? I... I'm sorry. The only thing that sticks in my mind is how much I wanted to throw up watching Drew and Nina. All right, let's just go into it. That's what she said. <laughs> so Nina went to see Drew. That was such bad soap. It was stereotype. So, so freaking ridiculous. I'm going to grab at you and suddenly your entire shirt pops open. Yep. Has Did Carly ever tell you what a great body? Do you no. think she never? Mm-mm. She didn't know. She told she me I was fat once. all the time and that I needed to eat more healthy. Give me a break. And, Ugh. okay, typical guy, because guys are like that, for him to respond and you've only seen half, you can say that without meaning I'm going to show you the other half because he hates her and he is angry with her. So he should be saying it like, huh, can you even imagine if the top half looks this good, how good the bottom half is, right. but you're never going to have it because you are such a nasty witch. Not her going, you boys pretend to be so manly, but really you're just scared. What would you do if a woman did this? And I would throw up. up her own blood. I would throw up because you're Nina and you're still married to Sonny and you constantly complain about how you want to be with him and how you're so in love with him and blah, blah, blah. You can't stand Drew because he was with Carly and he gave her everything. You are not sexually attracted to this man other than he has a hot body. For that well, that's for that one that's second. That's sexually attracted. No, I that's mean like, lust. yeah. But no, I. Uh, but I'm sorry. So she opens her shirt. They get it on on the desk, and then the next day we see her see her freaking out, saying, "You planned this." Whenever he asked so many times, exactly, exactly. He even specifically said, "Yes, they kissed," and then the, then it stopped, and she said some like whatever comment about oh see you're scared to go any further and he specifically said no i just wanted to make sure that this is what you want i don't want us to do something that you're going to regret later and she was like here take me now right and they shut the door and did whatever thank god they didn't show it like oh my god i seriously think i would have thrown up if i had to they don't watch show it. those scenes they only show the people in the thing thank god because i would ugh, no mm I would have had to turn off the TV and been like, I'm sorry, Shannon. I couldn't watch the rest of the week because I just couldn't get over this trauma that occurred when I watched these people go at it. It was horrible. It was horrible. And it's not even like we saw them in a passion fight where they're up in each other's faces. No, and I just sometimes... accidentally ripped her shirt. <laughs> like, he needs and a new seriously. seamstress if his buttons are falling off that easily. Right? <laughs> Yeah. And then she's like, this is all your fault. You planned this. And he was like, no, I didn't. And I asked you. And then she was like, well, since this happened, you owe me because it was such a whatever. And he's like, yeah, uh, I'm not doing whatever you want to do over a few rug burn marks. And I thought that was that was great. a great line. Great. But line. Also, her first thought was Carly. Has Carly ever told you you had a great body? So I definitely think she, oh, propositioned, she propositioned him. She did, just so that was, she could be so like, she could ha- hey, no. Carly, yep. I've been with all your men now. Ugh. You know who you're not going to be with? Jason, because he wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole. No. Thank you very much. No. But I'm sure that's who she's going to go to next, because she's just disgusting. Oh, no. And then she's like, now you have to help me have a relationship with my daughter. No. No, I don't. Right. I don't have to do anything for you. Because oh, that's what she went up there to cry about, was yeah. that... She wanted to surprise Michael and Willow. If they made a reservation and you didn't even know that they were going to be there, who's the surprise really on? Right. Okay. I will say Michael could have been, they could have thanked her for the champagne and gone on with their evening. Right. I do think that that was out of line for them to get so nasty with her when she just, 
She didn't say, I want to come eat with you. Yeah. She's like, I wanted to make sure that this night was special for you guys. Right. When she came over, they could have simply said, <clears throat> thank you for the champagne. Whenever she said, I want to buy you dinner, they could have been like, we politely decline. The champagne was enough. We're here to enjoy our evening. We've already Please leave placed our alone. order or something. something. You know? Yeah. You like, can't just throw together a seven course meal. Like, I'm pretty sure that you have to order that ahead that. of time yes. and they have to be preparing it. And, but yes, the champagne in of itself was in his response of if we wanted it, we would order it. I did feel bad for her in that moment where yeah. it was just because she even wasn't even going to say anything. She had it sent over through, oh my gosh, what well, Trish, mm-hmm. Trish brought it over and he was like, we didn't order that, you know, and Trish did try and it seemed like, okay, Mina did have to say, right, that's from me, you know? Yes. But question, how is the best seat at the Metro Court, the one right up against the windows that you don't see anything out of <laughs> in the middle of the dining room? I'm not sure. There's no view. Nope. They should have been out on the terrace if that was yes. the best view or the best table. Yes, with some heat lamps. Yep. Yes. But whatever. I did think it but was they are cute. they so boring. They are so boring, but I did think it was cute that they were trying to celebrate their anniversary before it got lost in all of Brooklyn's wedding yes, stuff. that was. The idea yes. of it was very cute. But then they just sat there and talked about Nina and then talked about how she feels guilty for being away from Wiley. I... Like, I totally am understanding this because I'm going through all this mom guilt with my kid. But as a nurse, can't you ask for a different shift? She's low on the totem pole, though. Yeah, but, but also I his recommendation like- was to get into volunteering. Guess what is just as busy and just as demanding is philanthropy. Like, that is that is also, it might not be a paid position, but that is also time heavy. Yeah. You know, for him ab- to... Absolutely. That, no, suggest- that's not... Like, you don't get those roles to be on the board of somewhere and not do anything. Like, right. you're not just filling a seat. You're actually engaging and exactly researching and talking to people and phone calls and emails and blah, I blah, blah. I do both. And I definitely spend – well, okay, I don't spend as much time because – but also, I'm living – I'm on the board for my daughter's school and I'm going on my 10th term. Right. But guess what? I am living it day in and day out, like, researching everything. And I bring that to the school so that the school can – you know, do all that. But I'm not just sitting back going, well, gee, I wonder what that's like. Right. You know, and I constantly have other board members reaching out to me and asking me questions, you know, and thanking me for being able to share all that. And I'm getting connected with other parents all the time. Right. And that's completely all that's unpaid. And if she's joining an organization that Lila started or Lila was big into, there's an expectation there. Mm -hmm. Like she's not just showing up once a year to hand out some pamphlets or something or sell some raffle tickets. Right. You're stepping in as a quarter main following in Lila's footsteps. Yeah. You're going to be busy. Right. So. And perhaps Michael missed the fact that when Lila got involved in all of that, all of her children were grown. mm -hmm. Unless she, unless she was involved in it, uh, but we just didn't, I mean, we just knew she was doing all that later. Right. It, this is another one of those things, kind of like the health conditions. Why can't we have a character just stay a stay-at-home mom? I want to be a stay-at-home mom. Right. I'm going to take care of my children. And we have the financial means right, for this to be something that I can do. Again, no one gets upset. None of the viewers, I feel like, get upset when we can explain that something is happening because they have more money because they are the quarter mains. So, Okay. And it's take okay a few years to be off. a stay at home mom. Yeah. If you can financially okay make it working, work, mom, then go ahead. It's okay. And mom guilt, you have it no matter what you do. Yeah, absolutely. But I just mean, she made the point Amelia's still little. Wiley is only half day. Okay. So say that you want to be a stay at home mom. You can keep up all your credentials for your nursing, your teaching, your whatever you want to do. And when Amelia starts kindergarten, say, I'm going to find a job that's whatever time Amelia is at school or part-time or whatever. Or find a different type of job that's not in a hospital. Right. There's just Maybe, so many options. I don't know anything about the healthcare industry though. So I'm not even going to try to take a guess because that's something that but I'm just I saying, just assume that she definitely they, is not on the, she is definitely not in the position to be able to pick her shift yet. She's, maybe she can't pick the shift at the hospital, but she could pick where she's working. You can be a nurse in a doctor's office. That is Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturdays. You could be a nurse overnight at the ER. I was actually thinking overnight, like she could do um, that 
10 to 6. Right. Have the have the nanny watch Amelia in the morning while Wiley's at school while you sleep and then be up for the rest of the day to play with them and then go to work. Right. Or I know like Matt's girlfriend, she's fresh out of school. She graduated, what, two years ago? And uh, she didn't like being a regular nurse on the floor. So she's part of the OR team and it's scheduled out surgeries. So she's on call oh. on certain weekends. But for the most part, her schedule is totally six in the morning till three in the afternoon, nice. Monday through Friday. Right. So yeah, there's all, I mean, nursing is a huge industry with a definite need for it. I feel like between that and the fact that Willow does have the quarter main connections, she could get some kind of shift that would work. If that's what she but wants she to do. She doesn't want to use the connections. And I have so much respect for them feel- because that's not fair to other people who put in just as much work as she has. And maybe even more True. for her to automatically get True. favoritism because of her last name. I agree with that too. I wouldn't want to use it either. But again, even though it's actually not her last name, possibilities out there, not yet, not officially. Yeah, she hasn't changed it. No, but oh, he's Corinthos. He's Corinthos. He again, is Corinthos. Right? I'm sorry. So she's yeah. So she's Willow Corinthos, not Quartermain. Sorry. I no. Okay. Like that's where I was. I was yeah, like, wait. I'm like, brain... am, am I misremembering that? I mean, him and Sonny are fighting. Maybe he's back to Quartermain. I don't, right. know. I don't know. But I mean, but it is. But yeah. But no. no, I agree. And but the thing is, too, she just went through her health challenges. Mm-hmm. And that's the other thing. She was very excited to get back to work, you right. know, and that's when she was sick. Right. So I, I just feel like there a... could be something there for her to be able to be, you know what? I could probably help other moms that are going through what I went through. Mm-hmm. And I would love to see her figure that out. Yeah. Figure out, you know what? I, I had my own personal health crisis and I have this nursing degree. How can we marry those two? And then that can be something that maybe the quarter mains invest in, but then she's doing, she's creating opportunities for maybe other right moms in the same position to be able to be supportive towards each other. And maybe something where some kind of a date, I don't know. There's just, so I have many like options. eight businesses that I want to start in my head. I'm like, if I could just get an investor to do all these things, I need to figure out which one to get started on first. To make so enough that, money so you can to, do yeah. the next one. Yep. Yeah. I want to be the female Richard Branson. He just doesn't know that we're going to be best friends one day. <laughs> Maybe I just need to get in touch with him. There you go. Dear Richard. <laughs> Please help. I know that you start a lot of businesses and he fails at a lot of businesses too. All right. Anyway. But yeah, I just. It was, it was, it was boring so and it was. Weird. They are just. <sighs> yeah. But then on the other hand, you have Chase and Brooklyn, and they are so cute, oh. and they just make you feel all squishy. I loved Chase and Willow. So that's, okay, I like Michael. Remember when we wanted Michael and Maxie? Yep. I think that that would have been great. Yep. They keep pairing Michael with, it. Chad Dole's a great actor. Michael can be a great character, and I think that it's intentional that we go back and forth on, oh my gosh, <laughs> you're horrible. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're so great. But the people that they put with him for longevity are just, they don't bring out the best in him. And we don't see him bringing out the best in Mm -mm. Willow or the actresses. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's not a good fit. Because we know how great she can be because we saw it with her and Chase. We saw it with Dawn Mm -hmm. of Day. You know, we know how great he can be because we saw it with him against Nell. Mm -hmm. You know, and when he was fighting with Brad and Lucas, you know, and all that, you know, it was... That was a Michael I could get behind. This is just so... It feels like he's just waiting for everyone to... Oh, now we're getting into healthcare with Aurora, even though we don't know anything about it. So then we're just going to ask Curtis about it. Right, Curtis, answer all our questions. Who also has no background in it. No, other than the fact that he was in a wheelchair. Right. Because he is a was a detective and then a private investigator. So for them... Sorry, we just jumped over there, even though you started with Chase in Brooklyn. I'm sorry. Can Can we finish? Okay. So... Then Curtis is like, well, we should buy up some boutique gyms and just, you know, put them under a corporate brand and, you know, make them, you know, more luxury and stuff like that. Okay, that's fine. That sounds great. But he doesn't have that as a background. Working out at a gym does not make you a gym owner. Nope. They could ask Sonny for some advice since he owns Owned, a gym. Maybe. If they're talking oh, about Oh, do you think that more? they'll try to buy up Volaninos? I think they should know not to touch that. Especially after all the stuff that's going down between him and Jason. Like, quit touching Sonny's toys. These are his. Did we ever see Sonny actually confront Michael about trying to take him down? No. He just kind of 
said he was over them. Remember whenever him and Sonny and Carly were talking and he was like, you guys are supposed to be my allies. And instead I can't even trust you. And now they just don't talk because it was when he almost had Dex killed Mm -hmm. and then Carly came out and he's like, you're protecting Michael. I don't remember if they did. I don't remember it. It it was was just one of those kind of conversations. Like you betrayed me. We're done. And back to the, they're getting into to gyms and if they're trying to put like a healthcare twist on it, like that's where we should be asking Willow, who's a nurse or Portia, who's a doctor. Hey, do you have some input? Or why don't they talk to Maxie about pulling deception under their, umbrella because right now maxi is getting furious at lucy i feel like that i feel like that would be more of a transition okay let's get into skincare because it also yeah meets because they have crimson right and so get those two together Mm -hmm. and then you start figuring out from there something michael and sasha were great together they were sorry i just had that flashback that they were great together Mm -hmm. i really liked him with her yep okay Okay, sorry. You went all kinds of places. <laughs> all right, so sticking. Well, because I was just thinking Sasha could be, should be, perhaps, you know, trying to find a way to. Well, she's looking for a job, just not very hard because she likes playing with the horses. <laughs> and she is hanging out, talking to Cody about how maybe she shouldn't have left Deception. Oh, wait, no, she knows that she should have left Deception at the same moment that Maxie and Lucy are at the home and heart show. And Lucy announces that she's going to be the person that sits up there and tries to sell the products. And she did awful. Oh my. It was so gosh. awful. And I felt like Morgan Fairchild did so great. Though. Yes. Yes. If she, I don't know. Lucy knows better than that. I felt like, no, so like Lucy is definitely self-absorbed. And she is self-absorbed. When Maxie told her Sasha can relate to people, Lucy took that as, oh, I'll try to get people to relate to me in the most privileged <laughs> right. way. I am the busiest woman in the world. I know. <laughs> Everybody is busy. Busy. If you are breathing, you are busy. Everybody has their own things. Oh, that's that just awful. Nobody's busier than I am. Yep. Oh, really, Lucy? Yep. Ugh, it was just so bad. So I don't know who they're going to call in next. I was waiting for Maxie to jump up and, and like fix it and be like, actually, oh, sorry, Lucy, you have a phone call. Anyway, I use this cream not only on my skin, but on my son's sensitive, right. blah, blah, blah. Okay, look, now we're opening up a whole new product line of we can have some skincare for babies. Yes. Hmm. It was just awful. But Sasha seemed very happy with her decision. And then Cody snuck in there. Please just let me know when you decide whatever you decide. Mm-hmm. I guess they have a new horse ranger. Mm-hmm. I'm just ready for them. I, like, I don't, I don't want them to move too fast and like end up hooking up, but I'm ready for them to like baby dates without the disguise of, Oh, I'm here to brush the horse. Right. Like we've established. I like, we like their each slow other. build though. Yeah. I like the slow yeah. build, but. I'm ready for something to happen. Let's go see a movie. Let's go out to dinner. You well, can be two adults and say, hey, I don't want to hook up for a while because I've just been through all these traumatic events. Well, they did say it. She did say that. She did. And but Cody's then they like, like, and Cody said, I'll wait forever for you. Mm-hmm. But they're not even pursuing anything. Right. You can date and not end up in bed together. I've heard that it happens. Or they don't even have to date. They could just enjoy each other's company and like. Oh, but again, without it's been it so being long this... since I've seen a movie. Oh, I didn't know that you liked rom coms, also, you know, or have yes. her saying something about, or have him say something about, you know, uh, the new Marvel movie that's coming out or whatever. And she'd be like, Oh my gosh, I would love to go see that. We should go sometimes. Yes. Something like that. Something. Exactly. Planned time together, not, oops, I came to and crush a horse. Or say self deprecating things that make Cody be like, You know, people love you, right? Mm hmm. Because that seems to be. Mm hmm. That's their whole thing. Yeah. So anyway, back to Brooklyn and Chase. Yeah. They're just so adorable. Yes. Not like these other couples. I feel like this was the best we've ever seen of Tracy, though. Yes. Yes. Um, But it started with Lois is like, here, Brooklyn, I want you to see the mother of the bride dress that I picked out. It was horrible. That was so so anti-Lois. Not Lois. And and Brooklyn's like, it's it's fine. <laughs> and she's like, no, tell me the truth. And Brooklyn's like, Ma, that does not look like you. How are you even going to do your nails to match that? Like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. And so they agreed that she would find something more 
Lois like to wear. And then the designer comes out as Chase is walking in and is like, oh, here, I have this dress that your fiance and mother kept behind your back that they designed for you to wear on your honeymoon. And she makes the comment, it's long sleeve, that's not going to work for the beach. And he's like, well, actually, we're going to Italy. And he sold his truck he for sold it. His truck. But what's he driving now then? Maybe he had a car too. Maybe. And then Brooklyn winds up telling Tracy and Tracy's like, that is a very sweet gesture. That's, that's very kind. And Brooklyn said, I'm going to buy him a truck. And she's like, do not do that. And then she explained, he made a sacrifice for you. Let him have it. You know, you right. swooping in and saying, well, I can buy it for you anyway, is it's belittling Chase is to traditional, him. but he's not like woman stay in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant. Right. But he is, I want to provide for you. I want to be able to do these things for you. And I don't think that he did it because she was perfectly fine going to Palm Beach. Yeah. You know, so it's not like he heard he was from it's not like she was settling for Palm Beach because they really wanted to do Italy, but they just didn't have the money. Right. It right, was, right. They decided that. Was, yeah. And then he was like, you know what? I'm going to. I'm going to take her to Italy instead because yeah. I think that would be Lois great. Had, had let it slip at some point that that has been her dream vacation since she was a little girl. And once he said it, she was like, yes, we're going to have wine here. We're going to go here. We're going to do this. And he's like, wow, you really thought of this. And she was like, mm -hmm. it legit has been my dream for my whole life. Right. So it was just so cute and mushy. But it's not – it was done in like the <laughs> best way. It's not – Right. she wasn't sulking and then he – caved in and did it figured out a way to do it you know it's not a gift of the magi maybe he downgraded his truck like maybe he had like a brand new like all souped up ridiculously priced truck mm -hmm. and he um sold that and bought like a regular truck or a right, regular yeah. car so he didn't just like get rid of his truck he has some things i want to know what kind of a truck though covers the cost of an an italy honeymoon mm-hmm Cars are expensive nowadays. Yeah, but they lose their value like as soon as you drive it. Well, if he has it extra souped up, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know either. I've never priced a trip to Italy, so I don't know. <sighs> but now I loved it. And I, I loved Tracy and I loved Morgan, or Brooklyn and Tracy talking about Lila's affair. Or not Lila's affairs. Lila was like a saint, but Edward's affairs mm -hmm. and Alan and Monica's affairs <laughs> and Tracy's marrying gold diggers and Brooklyn freaking out over, oh my gosh, my marriage is already doomed. Yeah. And she's like, no. Nope, it's not. And then she talked about Luke. Mm-hmm. And Brooklyn was like, I'm glad you finally got the love that you deserved. Yeah. And I'm sorry that those other guys sucked. It was it was very, very heartfelt and sweet. Mm -hmm. Nice grandma conversation. All right. Well, I guess on kind of on that, Alexis tells Gregory that she can't go to the wedding with him because she might be getting her law license back. How does that impact a Saturday afternoon? She's going to have to be on call 24-7? I, I think it was somewhere else in the state because she said she'd be pacing a uh, hotel. Unless they're hallway. getting married on a Tuesday, though, there's a good chance. I mean, courts, uh, show me a court that's actually open on the weekends. For her to be able to no, but maybe it's like Friday afternoon, and for her to drive back and be ready for the wedding and stuff would be too much. I still felt like that was a very dumb. Well, that's okay because now it means he can go with Tracy, which is better. Yeah. So, good luck, Alexis. They had Alexis fighting with the um, gossip column guy. Mm -hmm. They didn't end up having sex. No. <laughs> they were in a pretty heated conversation, yelling at each other, but somehow no one's clothes fell off. <laughs> And then I put Molly and Alexis and now I forget what their entire conversation was about. Oh, she was yelling at her because Molly was yelling at Alexis because um, they had printed an article <gasps> that's about right, that's Heather. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it said an in, it, uh, unidentified source. And so now all of Molly's colleagues are thinking that she was the unidentified source and it was not her. And Alexis was like, freedom of the press. Sorry. So mm -hmm. that was that. And then uh, Molly was the one that opened up the letter. That said, oh, you have a court hearing. Mm -hmm. Your appeal has been granted or whatever. I didn't understand Christina going to Sunny. And like, yeah, it was weird that Ava was like, sorry, your father's sleeping. You can't come in right now. But it seemed like she was more questioning Ava getting him a drink and stuff. I didn't find that weird. Right. Because Sunny has been drinking. It's not like Sunny quit drinking. And, right. Uh, and he's drank the same thing forever. Weird stuff with Christina right now, and I don't like it. Yeah. 
And then she said something about, well, pregnancy hormones are real. And I was like, pregnancy hormones are real. And again, if you wanted to get upset because she wouldn't let you see your dad at first, like you could have totally broke into tears then and I would have understood it. But her simply handing you a drink and then handing him a drink, like. That's a good host. Right. Like maybe you don't know what their relationship is yet because we don't know what their relationship is yet, but she's living with him. If I was living with someone and I handed you a drink, I would get him a drink too. Right. Right. That's just Especially manners. Especially since it's there. It's not like she even, it's not like she even had to go to the kitchen to get it. Like they have a bar right there. Why wouldn't you pour him a drink? That's right. Just weird. But anyway, talking to him about how she feels about Allison and keeping the difference between her being public with the public and then keeping her private life private and how she felt about all of that. And then I thought it was cute that they showed her and Blaze sitting on the couch, just watching a movie. Mm -hmm. I was like, thank you for not making everything in their relationship be this like big sexual thing. Like if you're in a relationship, sometimes you just want to snuggle on the couch and watch TV and that is all fine. But then Blaze got into the, are you sure that you're okay with this relationship? And Christina was like, um, I think you need to examine why you're not okay with it. It sounds like you're ready to tell people and your mom's controlling you. Yeah. So. I don't know. But Christina is so wishy-washy on it because at first she straight up told her, you know, way, way, way back. I'm not going to force you to come out. But then at Rice Plaza, when she wouldn't hold her hand, she was, was upset about it. And now because. Well, she said she's okay now because they did come out to their family and friends. Right. But it's still, I don't blame Blaze. She's probably like, all right, which way is actually going to upset Christina? Well, I just think it's crazy to think that you're out to your family and friends. I assume that means, like, you're going to want to go see the fireworks come the 4th of July. Assuming you're still together, go ice skating next Christmas and blah, blah, blah. You're going to be photographed holding hands. Like, if you're getting to be that big of a star, there is paparazzi that is going to follow you. Um, There's a lot of artists and musicians that came out later in life that 100% were photographed a ton and had relationships. Like, Ricky Martin, we didn't know that he was, like, he didn't come out to the public for years. But did they have years. pictures of him, like, holding hands but that's and what I'm snuggling saying. With... But that's what I'm saying. He never had that happen. Oh, and right. there definitely would have been opportunities for it. Lance Bass, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. Yeah. I guess they're better at hiding it than I would be. Because I feel like if you're out, like at that birthday party, they were like, this is my girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Then people are going to hear about it and know it. Like the boys, Danny and them, I could see them going to school and being like, my sister, sister sister-in-law, whatever, blah, 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 aunt is dating a famous singer. And like, where it's going to get out then. Unless they have the conversation with them about, hey, guys. Our private life is life is our private life, and you're not to speak about it. And I feel like that's something that a lot of celebrities do. Even oh, like there's a ton of celebrities that you really hear nothing about their actual private life because they make sure that that is how it happens. You have to make sure that you don't make the wrong people mad. That then wind up. I was gonna say this is the soap world. It's gonna come out at putting, some point in time. Oh oh oh! You know who's gonna do it? Link. Oh yeah. Yep. 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 yep, we're going to see Link again because of this. I almost guarantee it. Yep. All yep. right, that makes sense. There you mm-hmm. go. And Sonny actually defended Joss in a way to Christina. I felt, oh, yeah. I felt like he did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was part of that conversation. She's like, Joss was talking bad about you. And Sonny's like, yeah, she, she has issues because of the way things went down. She has a right to be protective of her mother and upset that I chose Nina. So, yeah. But then Ava decided to take Sonny's meds because... She couldn't sleep? (laughs) She couldn't sleep. So she went in the medicine cabinet and was like, may cause drowsiness. Oh, here, I'll take one. Oh, wait, five seconds later, I'm not asleep. I'll take two. And then she's going to be the one that figures out that they're not working, I think. But then how is she going to go and say, hey, Sunny, by the way, I've been taking your medication and it's not making me sleepy. It's not a will put you to sleep pill. It is a may cause drowsiness. Sometimes people don't get drowsy on a may cause drowsiness. Right. And you know, she has her cell phone on her all the time. She didn't bother to Google what that medicine is for exactly and think, oh, okay, yeah, most likely the side effect's not going to be to put me to sleep. Well, and also, what does he, I thought he took lithium for his bipolar. That's what they said in the isn't, past. Correct. Okay, we're, we are just going to Google this real quick because my understanding is lithium is an upper. So maybe he does need to take something to get him to sleep. Lithium medicine. 
Oh, oh, more. It's assumed that an increase in the intensity of the energy metabolism is one of the mechanisms of therapeutic and prophylactic action of lithium. Does it boost your mood? It's a mood stabilizer, but the exact way that it works is not known. Okay, I don't know. Point is, we don't take other people's medicine. We learn that as children. <laughs> Do not take it if it's not prescribed mm-hmm. to you. So I'm not sure what, what Ava's doing. Oh, if you have just started taking lithium or your dose has recently been changed, it may make you feel tired, dizzy, sleepy, and make your hands shake. Huh. All right. Kind of squashed that misperception. Misperception? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, what's going to come of that? She's seriously going to be like, Sunny, your medicine's not working because I'm not falling asleep. Right. But Jason asked him today, are you this mm-hmm. week, are you taking your meds? Because Jason went to Diane and was like, I'm taking back my half of Corinthos coffee. This is my office. Tell Sunny. So she did. And Sunny was like, mm-mm. And he went down to the warehouse and was like, listen here, you're not taking it. And Jason was like, yeah, actually, I am. Well, because he's not taking. This is he mine. Is, right. It is it's, his. It's mine. Because all of his stuff was in probate still. It does take seven years. That's I nuts. looked that up. Yeah. Um, For presumption of death. So, yeah, um, he was like, yes, I am going to to keep this because it's mine and that's how it is. And so Sonny was like, fine, but I'm telling you, if you start crossing lines or doing stuff you're not supposed to, I will take care of you. And Jason's like, all right, whatever. I'm not scared. He just wants to be 100% legit now. Exactly. And then Carly was supposed to be bringing documents over for... No, she wasn't. The courier was. The courier was. And the courier somehow got confused of where she was supposed to meet. So she showed up at Bobby's. she showed up where Jason was staying instead of his office. Right. And so she was like, oh my gosh, I have to go there at dark. And Carly was like, I'm going over there. I'll take them. The courier should not be handing papers off. No. No. But uh, Carly took them. And then she didn't get to deliver them because she found someone beating the crap out of John. And so she took him back to his hotel room and stayed with him overnight to make sure he didn't have a concussion. And of course, the next morning just happens to be that she opens the door to get their uh, breakfast that no one bothered to knock on the door about. And there's Nina ready to tell the whole town that Carly's hooking up with Agent Cates. And she went promptly and told Drew and Michael and Curtis. That was great. And Curtis was like, oh, man, Carly's cheating on you. And Drew's like, oh, yeah, we broke broke up. up. And then Curtis confronted him and said, man, I didn't even know. He's like, well, you did have some stuff going on. He's like, okay. And he's like, yeah, I broke up with Carly before. And he said it. Before she could break up with me. Because Curtis was like, oh, so that stuff was already happening. And Drew's like, no, but I just knew that it would. Yeah. Mm. The second Jason came back, I knew that she would just go. She didn't even have two seconds. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Hmm. And I do feel like Carly would have broken up with him before she did anything with Jason because I do feel like she had a level of respect for him. Mm Mm-hmm. But then Jason also offered to buy back the Metro Court and he sent Diane to go negotiate with Nina. And Nina's trying to play hardball. Yeah. And Diane's like four. And then there's nine. And she's like, I'll go take this to Jason. Yep. Or she said, we'll take it to Jason. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, oh, and by the way, this is not going to be an ongoing offer. So you might want to reconsider. And then Nina's like, well, maybe Jason wants to know who Carly was sleeping with last night. Right. Ridiculous. But I did love Carly talking about how the hotel had gone downhill. The ice maker isn't working on this floor. They didn't knock to tell me that there was food outside. Nina blah, blah, blah. fired someone who they typically just redirect. Right. And she's changing the colors of the bathrooms to like ugly mm-hmm. poopy colors is what it sounds like. I mean, she said like it was like a yellowish yellow, like a yellowy greenish. And I'm like, like mucus. Yeah, we don't want like, that. That's, no, I don't Please want that in my bathroom. <laughs> I don't feel like that's ever a good color for anything, but definitely not the bathroom. No. How'd you feel about Anna talking to Valentine? Because I wanted to punch him in the face. <sighs> hmm. She's torn because she wants to defend her love. No. But she can't. I already said I'm mad at him. No. It's. First of all. Okay. <laughs> 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 I have so many thoughts. So they have breakfast and he's like, you know, I'm willing to help you no matter what. He straight up lied to her face so easily and he's like no you're mistaken brennan and i were never friends and she was so super specific of the examples and she's <laughs> right. like, no you guys literally sat there and played this card game and blah 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 and he did mention something about you know i didn't really i wasn't really going after a lot of girls back then because of my whatever you know he, d- right i hate that phrase but that's what he did 
That's what he calls it. And uh, he didn't technically lie, though. She said, did you go to the jail to see Brennan? And he said, I have not been to the jail to that see is, Brennan. That is correct. But he lied about the past that me and Brennan weren't really friends. And I don't know. I'm not liking it. Not liking it either. I don't like it. Because it's always been Anna is who he changed everything for. But he was secretly working right. with Pavement all this time. Right. No, that doesn't sound right. That's not. Mm-hmm. Maybe Valentine has been kidnapped and this is Valentino. Maybe. My biggest <laughs> issue was he's all about protecting Charlotte. And although we have not seen her, like she still exists. So why would he be continually staying involved with Pikeman? That's what we talked about knowing. last week. That's how yeah. we wound up being like, well, when was the last time Charlotte was even here? Right. Because the choices that he's making right now do not support his, Mm-mm. because he took a step back when he found out about Charlotte. You know, he started to switch I things hope around. That Nina finds out about him and Pikeman because she will tell the whole world and then everyone can be like, what she are you do doing? She won't do that to him. She won't do that to him. Mm. I don't think she would do it to she'll him. She'll be so shocked. I think she'll say something. I think she'll be enough of a jerk to be like, you're all upset about Anna. You are lying to her face. You were all upset about this. You are lying over here. Like, what are you doing? And maybe not not come out and tell the world, but they'll have one of those conversations like they do in a hallway and then Anna will over here. Hmm. I think she's going to be the one to let it slip. I can see that, but I can't see her making it front page news and telling everyone. True. True. Hmm. I don't see her telling. I guess I shouldn't have said she'll tell everyone. She'll tell Anna one way or the other. Anna's going to find out. And I think it's, I do agree that it's going to be overheard and not directly told because she would not hurt Valentine. No. So it's going to have to be a conversation that is being overheard by Robert, who then goes and tells Anna. Yeah. There you go. Man, I really liked Robert and Valentine's bromance, though. Now he's going to be so mad you hurt Anna and you're working for the bad people. I know. And Anna is going to have to take a step back to Sonny and be like, I accused you of being this like horrible person when it turns out the Valentine is even worse than you. Mm, she's not entirely wrong, though. She's not entirely wrong, but she's going to see About it from a different one perspective. About this specific thing. Yeah. She's going to see it from a different perspective, though, when she reads, realizes the Valentine's involved. Hmm. Where has Spinelli been? I don't know. He has not seen Jason yet. He has not seen Jason, right? even though he knew they he was haven't. doing the pill thing because of Jason. Yeah. And we just like never saw anything more with him and Maxie. They kissed and admit admitted that they liked each other. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Bradford's not in the hospital, too, right? <laughs> like, what's going I don't on? think so. I know you talk to him daily, so come on. <laughs> I know. BFF with all these stars. And there's just a couple of other little Drew when he called Carly earlier in the week. And then he seriously says to her, you need to start thinking about the girls. <sighs> Say what you want about the fact that you're worried that she's going to go off and do everything for Jason. But you do not basically accuse her of being a bad mother. Nope. Because that is the number one reason why she continually divorced Sunny. Yes. Was because of, I mean, to be fair, she also did set it aside to remarry him. But that was where the conflict lied, was Sunny's stuff. Right. But, mm, not a fan. Oh, and then Curtis and Portia talked about Heather Weber and Laura and Kevin talked about Heather Weber. And I love that Kevin wants to help Heather be at least someone that Ace could have a relationship with. Yes, he's very sweet for that. And I like watching Laura, again, struggle realistically of, am I parenting right? What about this? I did think it was weird that she was like, he won't get to know, he won't grow up with Lucky and Lulu. And I was like, Lucky and Lulu are old. It's not like you're raising your children right. together. And then she was like, and all the other uh, grandkids are so old. And I'm like, right. But you just said it like Lucky and Lulu could be like friends with him. And that's maybe she means like helping as another parental support or just having an aunt and an uncle. That could be too. But yeah, I liked watching her. Hold it. Yeah. 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 Hold on. No, because Spencer is her grandson. So, yeah, like a great aunt and a great... Oh, my gosh. Lucky and Lulu are great aunt and uncles. No, because the baby is supposed to be Nicholas's. That's their brother. Right. So, 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was thinking Spencer. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yes. Okay, I was correct <laughs> the, the first time. The same as their aunt and uncle to Spencer. Listen, they we go through aunt this. and uncle, too. No, we go through but this all the time in my house right now because Spencer. of... But we go through this all the time in my house right now because Erica is my aunt, and it's so great when the kids introduce her, especially my daughter. She goes, this is my great auntie Erica. <laughs> and she's like, the way she says it means like she's just fantastic great. And then people just take that until they Someone they're like, oh, like, who is she? I was like no that's my aunt and they're like wait hold it she's actually like legit what <laughs> it's our favorite game to play <laughs> it's like yes she is great but she's also great yeah and then we get the kids involved oh the the pet kids involved with who are we to who each other oh my gosh and we have a fun dynamic in our family mm-hmm. so yeah they would be aunt and uncle yes okay and then kevin is like if this bad hip implant is what caused Heather to be a little more loonier than she was before, then maybe she can be redeemed partway. And so Ace can at least interact with her at some point. But I do like that they are finally addressing the, okay, this might explain the killings. Right. Because that hook killing was an awful storyline. So we got to blame it also on that. But it was also not, that was an extreme even for Heather Weber. Yeah. But Heather Weber had been locked up for other crimes. And we cannot forget take those. back everything that she had done right. prior to, especially when she even said, it's when I had a hip replacement. because, And I don't feel like, I feel like we would have definitely had a skiing incident when she was younger. Right. Like it has to have been some of the times that she was off screen. And those were all when she was older right so and then i think the last thing was just marshall and tj talking about christina being a surrogate what is it's too late to be having these thoughts and and he's like i don't feel like christina's doing a good job of incubating my baby i just don't understand where he's coming from no she's not drinking she's not doing anything else that's putting her around her dad that apparently we didn't know about all of her doctor's appointments yep She's eating healthy. She's taking her vitamins. She's doing she has support everything. from her romantic partner. Yes. So the only thing that she's doing wrong is having a relationship with her dad that you knew was her dad before any conversations about babies even came into play. And her dad is also her his wife's uncle. Uncle. So it's not like they were not right. connected to begin with. Right. So where's the problem, TJ? Yeah. Maybe maybe we should have thought about this years ago. If you didn't want to be connected to the Corinthoses. And it's then, not like she's hanging out at the warehouse, like walking around right. at nighttime or taking crazy chances. She goes to her dad's apartment, which is heavily guarded to have conversations with him. Or she's out at Charlie's where there's all kinds of people who knows who's sane and who's not that she's interacting with. Right. It was just a stupid, stupid conversation. It's just a stupid, stupid storyline. Yeah. For TJ to be, mm, this should have been... More well, before they finally. Marshall even said that he was like, "You had your time to complain, and you didn't, or to like bring your complaints forward, and you didn't." And he's like, "Oh no!" And I try okay. to talk to Molly about it, and she just defends her. Well, <laughs> she's because... defending her because she's actually carrying her child, and it's her sister, right? And she's healthy. Yeah, <sighs> like you could argue the same thing if Molly was pregnant herself. Right, she is a public defender. Right. She deals with people that could get mad at her and try to hurt her all the time. And it happens. Yeah. So what? So are we just setting this up then for Christina to be shot? I hope not. I think that that's, I think this is going to be TJ's (sighs) and now I'm going to get full custody of the baby. And so that he doesn't, well, I I just said that the baby's a he, I don't know. They didn't say, but for TJ to, leave molly and take the baby because can't be in this environment like where are we going with this i don't know but that's stupid (sighs) just um it is i think that was everything i think it was we actually talked about it more than i thought we would because i know i didn't that exciting i have a page to help excuse me and i double space (laughs) great (laughs) how was your week reality check this week was the exact opposite of the week before it was well not like i didn't have an awesome week but i had an eventful week so my son's college is only about two hours away from where we live and it was in the path of totality so we went up to his campus because they were also throwing a festival for the whole day Aww. and it was 
so cool to have. It really was because I've seen, you know, like the 85, you know, the 90. It really was different. It was weird, but it was cool. And it was also Rex Manning Day. So if you're an Empire Records fan, it was also Rex, Ma- Rex Manning Day. And so my aunt came up with a great idea of making shirts. And so we had them designed where Rex Manning's portrait or profile is in the eclipse. And it says, not on Rex Manning Day, 4 8 So that was fun. And it took us forever to get home. And then we had my daughter's IEP meeting, which is like my next to last one. I've Woo-hoo! been doing these since she was like four. Congratulations. You're I only done. have one left. But then we're going to have to worry about college stuff or like, you know, whatever, whatever comes after that. And that stuff, I don't know. And that was really it. I mean, it was a crazy week weather wise that kind of limited a lot of other things because we had like horrible, horrible floods. Mm hmm. Going around all around here, so. Yep. Yeah. Eclipse and IEP. I think that was it. What about you? I was car shopping all Yay! all week. Uh, Monday, we were at the car dealership during the eclipse. And so Madeline had extra glasses that we had ordered and was like handing them out to the other people at the, the dealer. Do you want to see the eclipse? Here you go. So they thought she was cute and Aww. she ate that up. And so, yeah, I was car shopping Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday, I finally got the car. She's very pretty. She is a Hyundai Ioniq 5. It's like an SUV, has four-wheel drive. Uh, I just still don't have a name for her. I was just going to ask. Do not have a name. It has to start with an H or an I, and I just I haven't found one that fits her because she's like blue-gray with a little bit of sparkle in her. You'll see whenever I leave. Um, so I just don't. Blue-gray with sparkle. I don't know what I feel like with a with an I or an H. Iris? It doesn't fit her. Okay. <laughs> In case anyone didn't know that I was crazy, I always name my well, cars. Yeah, are, well, they can be bluish too. Yeah. But yeah, it, no. just, it doesn't fit her. Um, Iridescence. But I name, well, that's pretty. Because that, that would be like the sparkle and the right. blue and everything. Because that's like the underside of a shell is like iridescent. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe. I'll yeah. have to think on that one. You guys just remember I said that. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, but yeah, I named my cars. My last one was Henry. Henry the Hyundai. Mine's the Atron. Means plus the Traveler. Oh, very nice. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. So yeah, I, we just we're getting to know each other. She has all kind of fancy features that I don't that I don't know. So um, yeah, once once maybe next week I'll have a name for you. But anyway, just happy that I'm over not having a car because if they total your car, at least with my insurance, you only get a week of car rental covered. And so like I hadn't even had the refund check of what was coming back from it being totaled when I had to give the rental car back. And I was like, help, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So after extensive car shopping, because my awesome son, who is all about the financial everything, did all kind of legwork, calling a million different dealers, trying to get the best deal. And it's like a proud mom moment because you can see how happy he is that he like got me the right car not like got me but you know what I mean research pointed and you in the it. right direction yes so every day he like sends me a new video about it or like ask something about it or whatever and so it's it's very cute that's awesome so so iridescent symbolizes the goddess the Greek goddess of the rainbow iris while the latex while the latin suffix Essent means having a tendency towards something. Huh. All right. I'll have to talk to her, see what she thinks about it. How does she feel about being the goddess of the rainbow that has a tendency towards something? I, I, that's a good one. All right. Oh. I did not know that the root word for Iris was rainbow. No, me neither. See, we are a full service <laughs> podcast. We teach you so much. Yep. So, yeah, that was my week. Car shopping. And on Thursday, we're going to teach you more about Bobby. I'm so jealous of you getting into Carly because well, leading up to too. Carly is not that exciting. In fact, you kind of just get mad. But you can do it too. I just know that it's a really, really heavy subject, and I know you don't like doing like the super in depth. I know, but you also really, really want to do it. Like that's but, part of it, but it's also that that from the very start you were like, the way they're breaking this up, that means I get Carly. So yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to put effort in where it's not needed because you're going to do an amazing job just because you love her. But I will watch plenty of videos so okay. that I can real live comment on it. Anyway, so yeah, have a good week. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye.
If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to peer54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Peer 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 